Hi, David Bysard here, and you are watching Powertech 10. Give me a few minutes of your time, and I'll give you the benefit of my experience building race winning engines for almost 60 years. For this, episode 30 something or other, just check up in the corner there, is a turbo project. Let me give you a little bit of the background of this. This here, this ugly brute here, is a 2.2 Chrysler engine. I must admit the last time I worked on a turbo Chrysler deal it was actually for the factory and I developed a 1600cc Lotus uh, Cortina killer for them. That project was finally put to sleep by the uh, oil embargo that the Arabs put on uh, back in the 70s. But uh, here's what I've got to do to, for this cylinder head here, 2.2 Chrysler head. Um, first, this is a project for a long-standing associate of mine, Richard Holdner, whom I am sure that most of you will have heard of. Richard gave me a call and asked me, with my turbo experience, what's the possibility we could uh, do a cylinder head for his turbo, 2.2 turbo, four banger project. So this is where it starts here. This scrappy looking uh, casting here, it's been washed in a car wash. I asked Richard to go through a car wash and wash it. So now it's got to get cleaned up, ready for initial flow testing and for reworking. Now you will find that there's going to be much more to this cylinder head than just porting it, right? It's a turbo head and any cylinder head that has to be used on an engine whereby the oxygen level is increased over the normal that normally seen by a, a normally aspirated engine the dynamics of the intake to exhaust ratio change in one of my episodes it'll go across the bottom I explain why changing the parameters of the induction by the introduction of a greater mass of oxygen either from nitrous oxide or any form of supercharging means that the intake to exhaust ratios change. It goes into that. Needless to say I don't want to double up on that so check it out. A couple of points on this cylinder head. You'll see that it's a bathtub chamber. That's not the best kind of chamber to have, it's just the most convenience. A wedge chamber ultimately is a much better deal. Also, it is not cross flow, which means all the heat of the exhaust, which is considerable on a turbo motor, has easy access to the intake. Not good, but we're going to take steps to avoid that. The cup on my trusty Goodson valve spring compressor won't quite fit in here because the edge of the retainer is very close. Because the spring compressor won't fit, I'm going to resort to the tried and tested brute force method. And here's how that works. Using an old socket and uh, uh, extension like this, you can't get more sophisticated but this is what I use I've got so many spare sockets and that that uh, using it for this is not going to be an issue place this on here and give it a hefty blow like so 
here's the head ready to be uh, hot tanked and uh, be blasted. Let's have a look at the ports and see what we're starting with. There's our intake port. It looks like it's got some potential. It doesn't look too bad in stock form except for detailing. Here's our exhaust port. Difficult to see what's going on there because, well, it's a bit black. As I've said before, the combustion chamber, a bathtub chamber is not the best chamber to have, but we can do things with it. So, let's start the ball rolling. Here's the molding compound that I'm going to use. If you go into somewhere like Hobby Lobby or Michael's or any arts and crafts shop, you will find that they probably have a molding compound similar to this. I've used about four brands, they've all worked well, um, but it's only a viable thing if you're molding once in a while to buy it like this. When I did lots of molding many years ago, I used um, a uh, silicon rubber known as Blue Sill. I think it's still available. You'll have to do a bit of searching on uh, Google to find that, but uh, there's plenty of commercial brands out there. Expect to pay about 145 bucks for about a little over a gallon of this stuff, which of course will do somewhere in the region of about five or six cylinder heads. This stuff here is between 20 and 25 bucks and one pack will do a typical cylinder head. Now the other thing we need to do is to polish the valves, right? Front face is not important at this stage, but the back face is. This is the exhaust valve ready to go in. Last, we need to lubricate the port. I use a mixture of oil and WD-40. That's about WD-40 with about 10% of engine oil in it. I, I have heard that PAM, the non-stick cooking spray, works very well. So you may want to try that. There are alternatives to uh, using springs to hold the valves in place. Sometimes you can't find a spring that fits or it's not easy to get in to fit the spring. In which case, what you can do here is clean the chamber and the faces of the valves with it all in situation and uh, clean them with the uh, uh, lacquer thinner to get all the WD-40 off and then fill the chamber with Play-Doh like this but have a slight crown on it. The reason for that is we're going to put some tape over it to hold it in place. Here we go with the tape. Well, I may have overdone it a bit with the tape, but better more than less. The next stop before you actually start pouring the mold is to level the cylinder head. Right, doesn't have to be dead level, but somewhere within a degree or so. Right, I've done this one ready for uh, molding, so that's the next move. Mix the molding material. I find it's best to mix our molding compounds in a cup, a china cup like this, because the, the glass coating on it, this won't stick to it, so it's easy to clean after. Now, it's going to take about a three quarters of one of these. So let's see how we go with that. It's going to be easy to mix three quarters of this. And just a little bit more. Right, there we go. We will stir that. Well, 
everything is set up. So the first thing we do is take out the valves. You may have to do a little tapping with a plastic mallet to get the valves out. Right, they usually get a little bit sticky. But just tap them like that. Turn the head over like so and pull them through. Okay, now comes the tricky bit. What we've got to achieve here is to unstick these molds. The first thing we do here is loosen them up by carefully putting this in. Spray it with a bit of WD-40 to make it all slide and work the screwdriver. Make sure there's no sharp edges around this. Pull it away from the, the bore so you can get plenty of WD-40 in there. Right. It'll take a pretty hefty push to start with, but it will start easing out. And the further out it comes, the easier it is. And there we go. There's our molded port. Now let's do the exhaust. Here I'm positioning the molds of the ports in the position they are and I'll slowly swing them round so that you can see the form. I have a little story about Chrysler's cylinder head uh, design department. Many years ago just after the uh, um, Hemi, the new Hemi came out, this would be probably 2000, I went to see the team that designed the Hemi engine. Anyway, the PR guy, who was an ex-hot rod guy, took me to see the guys in the cylinder head department. Just before going in, he said to me something along the lines, now let me warn you, probably nobody will know who you are and what your expertise in, is in here, and they'll probably treat you just like a journalist, right? And uh, so we opened the door and went in. And the very first guy that we saw as we went through the door looked at me and he said, Ah, oh, Mr. Visard, pleased to meet you. Much to the surprise of my hot rod journalist who figured that journalists are not necessarily very well known amongst professional engine builders and designers. It turned out that of the 17 guys in there, 14 of them knew who I was and about 12 of them had cylinder head material that I had written. In fact, the, ang the valve angle on the Hemi head was decided upon because in one of my articles I said the optimum angle for the intake valve uh, in a Hemi configuration was 18 degrees and that's what they used and uh, I think it was close to that on the exhaust. Let's look at these ports individually. As good as the Hemi ports are, that's 2000 turn of the millennia period, these ports are from a different era. They are very unsophisticated to say the least. You can see all these lumps and bumps and things like this. Now let me just rock that over and you can see that there. And look at the offsets there and the shape around the, uh, just after the valve seat. Not what you'd call terribly scientific. As for the exhaust port, it's almost a nightmare. But there is one good thing about it. That means we can make some pretty good improvements. Look how it bulges out uh, right after the uh, uh, machining just in the throat. And look how constricted it is at this point in the turn here. Right. Uh, also, this misalignment here looks like somebody uh, tried matching up something about as accurately as a plumber matches up 
copper pipes when he's got to go around a lot of corners and join up a lot of spots where things don't necessarily line up. Still, we've got something to work with.